Live from Orlando, Florida, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering Pentaho World 2015. Now your hosts, Dave Vellante and George Gilbert. Hi, everybody. We're back. This is The Cube. We're live here at Pentaho World. This is day one of a two-day Cube event. We're going to go wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Kevin Eagleston is here. He's the Senior Vice President of Social Innovation at Hitachi. Kevin, welcome to The Cube. So you do a lot of Twitter? Is that the deal? So, <laughs> so I am now tweeting, but I sort of asked to have it done. <laughs> you know, I looked you up on Twitter and I think, wow, it's not I am actually, social graph is. Yes, yes, social you, innovation, yes. of course, Hitachi. Let me just have a shout out to Michelle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I love this story. I love the acquisition. When it first happened, I. I First of all, I liked it because I thought it was a, a nice play for Hitachi Data Systems content you know, business, but now, having heard you today and yeah. starting to think about the amazing opportunity, $80 billion company, an industrial giant, the fit that Pintaho has, so congratulations on picking up a gem. Thanks really so much. Really amazing. And yeah, we've gotten a lot of words of congratulations that you bought the right company. Yeah, that's so, how we feel. So let's help our audience understand what social innovation at Hitachi is all about and sure. your internet of things and big data vision. Sure, so as you saw in my presentation, it, social innovation is our IOT and big data strategy. The longer story of that is that it really reflects the 105 year uh, sort of uh, motto that we live by at Hitachi and that is that we've always wanted to take what we're really good at and solve big problems and make a difference in the world. And that's the social aspect or the societal aspect of what social innovation is all about. But now it reflects our IOT and big data strategy and we think that delivering IOT solutions, solving big IOT problems is the best way to make a difference. So people think, you know, historically, Hitachi, Hitachi Data Systems, you know, mainframes, yeah. storage, but Hitachi Consulting, you guys got server infrastructure, you've got obviously industrial aspects of your business, mm -hmm. medical. Mm -hmm. um, talk about that business and how, how it's, it's the scope of the traditional HDS team is expanding. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, Hitachi historically has been operated like a conglomerate. So it's over 900 companies operating pretty independently uh, and HDS being one. And we've been around a long time, as you guys know, you've, wor you've worked with us over 30 years. Independent, US-based, Silicon Valley-based company focused globally on, on, in the IT space. Um, the Internet of Things has really brought us all together. What it's driving is, with us, you know, kind of at the pointy end, especially Pentaho at the very pointy end of, of this, that this new revolution of IoT means that this is the time for the industrial side and the IT, big data analytics sides to all come together to bring solutions to market. So move from, you know, a pure, uh, you know, uh, product in a particular industry to a real solution to an IOT or big data problem. So I'm very interested in the go-to-market. Um, how do you see that playing out? You're probably still figuring it out, but I right. mean, Pentaho to me is like, I'm reminded of Napoleon Hill. A little lever can make a huge game-changing difference. And Pentaho, you talk about tip of the spear. Yeah. How do you plan to go to market with Pentaho and build solutions? Sure, so Pentaho specifically, there are two paths. We're taking this huge sales force that HDS has, so 2,000 people globally in the field, plus the Japanese Hitachi sales force to grow Pentaho's organic business. So everything Pentaho does and has proven itself in the market to do, it's going to be a vast expansion. That's what we would call synergy, our, our synergy play. And then embedding Pentaho in everything we do from a solution perspective. So you see Pentaho over time embedded in the solutions we bring to market. Yeah, so how did the acquisition come about, right? Because when I saw it, I was like, hmm, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and then I started to understand it a little bit better. But so take us back to sure, of, sure. So it goes happened. back a couple years, and and like you know, we've done a lot of acquisitions, and our style of, a, of acquiring is let's date and then like let's decide if this makes sense, this relationship makes sense, and so we we had a mutual interest in each other, 
we internally wanted to make an acquisition that did what Pentaho did for us, you know, in terms of strategic direction into IoT and big data. We looked at over 100 companies, but, it, but as we were looking at over 100 companies, we started to build a relationship with Pentaho, because it was pretty clear that they stood out to us as a great match for us. So we, built, we uh, put an OEM agreement in place so that we would start the process of embedding and in the meantime get to know each other. There was simply no question uh, you know, who the best acquisition was and that was Pentaho. So GE made a lot of noise about in industrial internet. Mm -hmm. They put an investment in Pivotal, mm -hmm. which I think they seem to be you know, on part of it sort of backpedaling. Um, their idea sounds at least superficially like yours where they were going to be drawing sensor data from all their equipment mm -hmm. and in some sense adding a service capability back to it all. Mm -hmm. Whether it's you know, selling uptime for jet engines mm -hmm. you know, or uh, uptime for turbines you sure. know, for power dams or whatever. Yeah. Um, how is what you're doing different and the, the choice of tools is very different that, you, that the two companies made. Yeah. So in How some does that yeah. reflect the two strategies? Yeah, so they are two strategies, but they are very similar. We've actually have compared notes with GE, because GE is actually a great partner of Hitachi's. So we have a joint venture in the nuclear business. Uh, we do a lot of business on the HDS side with, with a couple of different parts of GE. And GE is a great Pentaho uh, partner as well. So they embed Pentaho in a solution that they have. So what's different about between the two companies is, you know, besides the fact that it's an American or Japanese company, is that GE didn't have their own big IT operation, right? That had been sold off some time ago. In fact, I think Quentin has a history with, with that side of GE. Um, we did, so GE made an investment in Pivotal and partners with a lot of companies. And we would expect that over time, because our goal in IoT is we just want to make that pie bigger, faster. And it's a very big pie, the IoT pie. We think a partnership with GE, yeah, you know, in many companies will there be some competition, no question about it. But we think a partnership also is a good Can we play. talk about the TAM a little bit? Yeah. Uh, you threw up some big numbers today. I think mm -hmm. I saw one number, seven trillion. Whoa, yeah. that caught my attention. That was sort of the value creation. And then I think still two trillion was, mm -hmm. was the market you're going after. Talk about the TAM, how you look at it. Sure. So, um, seven trillion represents the, uh, uh, the entire IOT market according to IDC for 2020 and then we actually hired a consulting company to take a look at everything that we do industrially and match it to what you know, that, that uh, market looks like and it's about a two trillion dollar market. And what, the way we look at it though is, is maybe a little different. You know, we're a commercial, publicly owned company that you know, we need to drive returns to shareholders so a two trillion dollar TAM gets our attention and, uh, and all, but we also look at that as, that's an investment that people are making around the world in IOT solutions, for which they expect they're going to get a return. So that return means that that uh, impact of IOT in the world, and the impact that we can have is much greater than $2 trillion, in terms of economic growth and standards of living and healthcare outcomes, more efficient transportation, so many ways to have a real impact, and that's the other way we look at that big TAM. That's potentially conservative. Mm -hmm. You know, a seven to two ratio. I, I could see it being a lot bigger. You know, and it's, and it's a very long-term market, right? This isn't going to be one of those, you know, up and down kind right. of things. This is decades. In well, I, I wanted to ask you that. I saw a chart the other day, and it showed disruptions in the industry. It showed mainframe, and then mini, and then internet, you know, PC, and then internet. And it showed IOT is lower than those curves. I said, I don't get it. Um, less disruptive? I talked to the person who did the chart, he said, well, it's the guys who own the things that are going to evolve to dominate Internet of Things. Mm -hmm. So, value creation, bigger than all of those. But in terms of disruption, it's the guys who, it's the GEs, the Hitachis, mm -hmm. who have the infrastructure in place yeah. that are going to you know, profit from this. Do, yeah. Does that make sense to you? And not only profit, it does, and not only profit, but they're in the best position to actually drive the value for the clients, whether it's cities trying to become smart cities, or whether it's hospitals trying to deliver better outcomes, or it's other industrial sorts of plays, we're just in a unique position to be able to do that. So that leads me to the ecosystem question. So talk about your ecosystem, how deliberate you will be around IOT. Obviously, you can't go it alone. 
It takes more than a village, it takes a globe. <laughs> Talk about your ecosystem strategy. Yeah, so, so it, it's huge. It it's going to take a huge ecosystem for all of us. And, and if you're not partnering uh, to, to deliver value in this space, you can't be successful. You can't be selfish. You can't be a not invented here kind of a company. And so we're very, you know, one of the reasons that you heard from me that we acquired Pintao is because we're moving down the open source path. So you see increasingly in our software business becoming more and more open source and an as a service model as well. Uh, so uh, we incorporate a lot of open source technologies in our solutions, in our stack. That will be part of our future, no question about it. And while we're really good at a lot of things, you know, we have tremendous scale in terms of innovation, technology, and, and people, you know, all the you know, 500 data scientists we have, we also recognize we're not good at everything. There are companies who are better at elements of a solution or a stack or however you want to look at it. So we're not at all proud about saying, okay, we're good at that, we will build that. We're going to partner for this. We'll OEM for that. We'll license for this. So, just to understand the different strategies, just because GE's been somewhat vocal, um, or is somewhat uh, you know, articulate, at least over here, about what their intentions are. So, so they might say, rather than sell a jet engine, we're going to sell you know, mm -hmm. flying time. Yeah. Um, if you were in the jet engine business and you're packaging up something that includes Pentaho and mm -hmm. other things, what would you be selling? Sure, so um, rather than jet engines, I'll tell you what we're doing in the train business okay. because that's a business that we're really big yeah. in. So we make you know, bullet trains and all of that. So in the UK, we've won a series of uh, uh, train contracts, which traditionally in the old days would be locomotives and carriages and some services and all of that. That's transportation as a service now. So we have a 28-year contract in, the, in England, uh, and across the UK actually, that's purely SLA driven as transportation as a service, much like your example with jet engines. And so what that means is that um, we will, you know, we're, we're the, providing all the investment, the capital investment. We supply it as a service to SLA levels. We leverage big data and analytics to drive the normal efficiencies, you know, better customer experience, and we're incented to be as good as possible at that. Well, and then the other thing you said in your talk is you've digitized or begun that journey internally, and that's huge, right? When mm -hmm. you think about IoT, you think about digitizing everything. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit more about that and sort of what you've learned through that process? Sure, so um, you know, as we at HDS and Pentaho have gotten to know our colleagues around the different industrial elements or sections of, of Hitachi, what's clear is one is that they're always known as, no matter what business it is, like you knew us in the mainframe or the storage business as being the best in class, like never break and reliable. That's been the case across all of our industrial uh, solutions and products as well. And in order to do that, they, you know, we've always had to be the most advanced. So we not, you know, we've sensorized everything that we do and we collect data on everything that we do so that we can deliver great reliability, whether we're making a compressor or a wind, you know, wind turbine or a gas turbine or whatever it is. You know, and so we've sensorized it and then we turn that into valuable data to just make stuff run better and now ultimately to provide you know, new revenue models for our customers. Kevin, you also said in your keynote, we want to be more like Pentaho. We want to look more like them. What did you mean by that? I mean, you yeah, talked about I, open source, but what did you really mean by that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what I meant by that is that like I said before, you know, we've been all the, you know, just a, an industrial conglomerate. So really good at widgets, a lot of whole different, a lot of different widgets. What Pentaho is good at is, you know, blending data. Uh, they they are a, they are the big data future and IoT future for you. But that's why all of these customers use and embed Pentaho what they do, and they're open source, uh, and they're fresh and young and new to the industry. All of that. The, if we were to suck them in and try to make Pentaho look like us, they'd die, right? You know, they would just sort of dissipate and we'd lose all the power of that. What all of our Hitachi colleagues and us at HDS see in Pentaho is this is the, way, the direction of the universe, you know. This is where business is going, where IT and industry is going. They've got a model. 
whether it's subscription based, whether it's all the things they do technologically uh, and open source, that everything that they do, that's what we want to be, and they figured out how to do it, and they've made money doing it. I've uh, followed Hitachi, had a relationship with them for over, well over 20 years, 20, 25 years. Been to Japan a bunch of times, been to Odawara a bunch. It was always cloudy, could never see Mount Fuji. <laughs> but it was always a very, a company that thought for the long term. So I want to ask you, this week we saw an acquisition or announced Dell EMC. You've seen companies like Informix go private, you know, VMC, Dell went private, so that they could take a longer term view. Right. As somebody who's been in that business competing against DMC for all these years, you guys must be thinking, is this really how it ends? <laughs> <laughs> what does it say about the industry that we're in generally and, and Hitachi's strategy specifically? Yeah, well, you know, having worked at, you know, in other companies that were publicly held, um, American headquartered companies, we're very different. Even though we're publicly held, we're traded on the Tokyo Stock Exchange yeah. at all, we're still, the Japanese long-term business culture you know, permeates everything that we do. So I've always felt as though it's much more like working for a private company. You know, we, we're certainly driven to produce you know, uh, return to our investors, uh, you know, all of that, but the attitude is different. There's not that you know, last two weeks of a quarter desperation to get to an earnings per share number and do unnatural things that are good for the short term and horrible for the long term. We really have worked very much like that as Hitachi and as a subsidiary of Hitachi's. So um, I think that we've already, you know, we have the benefit of that. Uh, yeah, well, that sort of we're super excited for you know, the road ahead. We're out of time, but I'll give you the last word, Kevin. So thinking about sort of the bumper sticker on this event and as a launch pad for the future of, sure. of, of social innovation. What's the tagline? What's the bumper sticker? Well, I'm going to go back to how we look at the Internet of Things, and it's, this is what the Pentaho acquisition was all about, and that is that we want to play in the, we want to be a dominant player in the Internet of Things space, and specifically in the Internet of Things that matter, where we can make a big difference. That's what it's all about. Awesome, for us. huge opportunity for value creation, um, and it's not just about, as you said before, the profit from the vendor. It's about the value that you're creating downstream. So, as I say, we're super excited. Thanks so much for coming on theCUBE, but thanks for having us here. Yeah, well, th thanks for coming. It's really fun to have you guys here. You've really spiced it up. Yeah, it's really our pleasure. All right, keep right there, everybody. We'll be back to wrap. We're live here at Pentaho World 2015. This is theCUBE, right back.